Welcome along to our channel, Mix and Blend. Yes, man, it's me, Jason. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. The family's not here, it's just me. I'm going to be sharing a little bit about the surgery I had in 2017. It was major surgery. Um, in fact, I was under the surgeon's knife three times in that year, all right? And I'm, going to, I'm just going to expound on that a little bit and let you know why I needed the surgery, what surgery it was and how it all went, recovery, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm doing this because a lot of people showed a lot of interest on TikTok and stuff and they wanted to know. So this video, YouTube, more time, you know what I'm saying? I can explain a little bit more, yeah, man. So, <sighs> This video is not for everybody, okay? Parents, watch it through first before you let your children. Don't let your children just run with it because you know what I mean? I will show some images later of my scars. Nothing too graphic, but I will show some images of my scars. So, you know what I mean? They might not want them to see that. So, watch it through first and you make your decision, all right? I'll give a warning later as well. So, don't worry about that, all right? Yeah, man. Welcome. Here I am where the movie started Facing at a photo they've taken Space tree flying through the skies And battles happen everywhere I don't need any hero to save me So why on earth did I need surgery? Well, all my life I've had issues I've faced issues all my life um, And it was never really investigated You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think people didn't really believe me I always felt like someone had their hand around my throat And they were choking me Doing the top collar When you have to put the tie on shirt And, and it, I couldn't do it man It actually physically hurts me It just it feels so uncomfortable It's like they're pushing a thumb into that part there You know what I'm saying So it's always an issue for me um, So that was just one of the problems I had uh, growing up Another one was holding my arm up for too long in school I couldn't hold my arm up too long I just feel dizzy and I couldn't do it for too long It was it was making me feel very weak and tired um, So I, I wouldn't answer the questions too much You know what I'm saying uh, So so there was lots of little problems Throwing with the arm It was, was weak You know, Everybody else could throw the ball far me, I, was, I was weak with it I wasn't good um, And I had a lot of different issues like that growing up um, and you know, it wasn't really attributed to much. And also I, I had epilepsy, so I'd be passing out and having seizures and, and that kind of thing, you know what I mean? And it plagued my life, I'm telling you, plague, epilepsy was a plague. Um, so a lot of these things happened, but it wasn't until later on in life. So I'm in my forties now, right? In my forties. And I, I, I was, you know, to, not to be nasty, but I was spitting blood and, do you know what I mean? I had issues with my throat, I kept choking and it felt like a lump in my throat and, and, and it was just getting really bad. Um, and the doctors put me on what they call the pathway to cancer. What do you mean pathway to cancer? Pathway to cancer, you know, no, sir. Mm -mm, I don't even know pathway to cancer, but that, that's what they called it. And they were looking for tumours. So they, they were doing investigations to look for these tumour to see, you know, what are going on with the cancer. And during those investigations, they, they did a test. And they saw this, this in my throat. They saw this, this, this lump in my throat and they realised it was an artery. So I, I had an artery wrapped around. this in between my trachea and my esophagus and it was choking me like this and it was getting tighter. Mad! They'd never seen that like it, they didn't know where it was. And then a doctor saw and he, he recognized this condition called abhorrent artery. What does this mean? It means that my, my, my subclavian artery, which is connected to the, the current artery there, which goes up to your brain, a big thick artery there, this subclavian, which goes down your arm, is joined to that, okay, um, for normal people. But not for me! No, I'm different. <laughs> I'm di I told you I'm different. It, it, never, it never got so for me. My one came straight from the heart. My subclavian. So it never joined to this. It came from the heart, but it went through my throat and into my arm. So it was choking me. So they discovered this on my pathway to cancer, which I didn't have. Praise God, I never had no cancer. But they found it during that process. And I was 46 years old when they found it. 46 years old, they come in and tell me. The woman said, yeah, do you find it hard to hold your hand up? I was like, what? yeah. And, and she said for these things that no one's ever really listened to me or believed me. And this woman sat there and said, yes. And she named them and said, this is why. Not only that, we can do something about it. I want to drop over to my eye. I'm telling you, I cried, man. I was just so relieved, so happy. Like, wow. Just for the point that someone believed me was like, wow, this is so, so amazing. They could do something about it. Okay, so, so what are they going to do? This is the surgery plan, all right? They're going to cut the subclavian artery and join it to my carotid artery. What? They're going to, that main artery. Now, as someone that did some training to fight, I know that these arteries are, 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 are you can knock people out. You know I mean? You have to hit the artery. I shouldn't give you that information. No, I shouldn't give you the information. <laughs> these arteries are serious. They go to your brain, they feed your brain. You don't cut off up the, these arteries. You don't cut that blood supply to the brain, all right? It's very dangerous. And I really couldn't get my head around. You're gonna, you're gonna join them together. 
Like, what on earth? So you're going to cut this artery, and for how long is it going to be cut for? Do you know what I'm saying? While you join it. So I was, I was really quite worried about that. But they're going to do that, join them together. They're then going to open me up. Like, when I say open me up, I'll explain that in a little bit. And they're going to remove this artery that is, that is in my throat. They're going to cut it out, all right? That's the plan. That's the plan. So I go along now. I'm at the hospital. I'm sitting there. They put me in a waiting room, sit down in the gown, waiting to go in for this surgery where they're going to cut. Um, I'm really worried, you know what I'm saying? So to put my mind at ease, I decide to watch a YouTube video to see the surgery, all right? That sounds mad to some people, but for me, I needed to. I watched it, and it was so simple the way he did it. And that's what he did. It gave me total peace of mind. I was very relaxed. When I sat down, the man said to me, you're right, we're going to put a shunt in your neck. I said, oh, uh. he said, a plastic tube in your neck. First time I heard it, I'm about to go to surgery, you know, and it's the first time anyone mentioned to me about putting something in my neck. I'm not, I don't like things like that. I find things like that very, very, very difficult. Maybe it's my Asperger's. I don't know. I just, a, a tube in my neck. Um, and it was too late now, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was going for the surgery um, and they did. They put a tube in my neck, they cut me. And what, he was really nice because he cut in between my, um, in between my tattoos. And it was just very kind of him, do you know what I'm saying? Very thoughtful. And they put a tube in my neck, connecting these two arteries together and they blocked off the other artery. So what's next? The next stage was to, to, to go in um, and have a thoracotomy. So the recovery from the, 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 the bypass, this, this bit of plumbing here where they put a tube in, recovery was all right, you know. It, 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 you know they, obviously, you're, you know, you're on very strong painkillers. Um, you have to rest. Like you have to sit upright and stuff for a little while. But it was pretty quick. It was pretty all right. Um, and I, I say that considering what they did. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like I was up and running about straight away. But considering what they did, it was all right. The man explained to me how he was going to cut me so that he could get to my heart, my lungs, my throat all at the same time. So this is one of the, big, the biggest operations that they do on people where they, the cut is enormous and they literally cut you in half and it's, yeah, it's graphic and then nice. And I thought to myself, it doesn't sound as bad as this. Let me look on YouTube and watch a video and see what it's like. What a mistake. Oh my gosh. I watched a, I watched a video and it was horrific. It was it was horrific. It was the only video I could find. Something had to be something had happened to them. I don't want to get graphic and ah, it was too much. And 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 the thought of going and having that done was just oh my days. This time I'm worried now. I went for the to to the doctor, the um surgeon, to find out you know what, you know how things are going, um, what, how they're going to do the surgery, etc. And he told me the risks. The main risk he said to me was death, and that's how he said it. I was like okay. Um, then he said because of where they're cutting me is your voice will change after the surgery your voice will not be the same and it might not return but they their hope is that it would boy i'm a, I'm a radio presenter you know particularly at that time you know what i'm saying I, 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 i'm a radio presenter so my voice changing what do you mean it's going to change like like am i going to have a high-pitched voice or something and, and what, what do you mean it's going to change and that was so such a worry for me but i knew i had to do the surgery the other risk was that you'd be a paraplegic, you know what I'm saying? Because of the nerves where they are. That means you'd be paralyzed and, and using a wheelchair. There was a list of serious risks. It was, it was troubling, but it was weighing up what, you know, the two things. It, it, you know, we had to do the surgery. After the thoracotomy, which went very well, I, I was on some serious um, uh, drugs for pain relief. And it was horrible because I'd be hallucinating and I'd, I'd kept, it was so real and so vivid. I've never, I've never taken drugs in my life and I've never experienced anything like it. I was, I was horrible. I hated it. I don't know why people would take drugs to induce this purposefully. I don't know. It was horrible. And I, I just wanted to get off as soon as possible. And, and, I, and I explained that literally, you know, after coming out of ICU, etc. and I was able to, you know, articulate myself, they took me off and they put me on um, Oromorph, the morphine. Um, and I was, so I was on the morphine for the pain. Um, but I remember one time, uh, my boss was coming to visit me. Two of my bosses were going to come visit me, all right? So, and, and I'm waiting for them to come. And then all of a sudden, a porter comes and says, you've got to take you down for um, x-ray. I said, well, my boss is coming, but come, we could go and come back quick. So he took me downstairs, they did the x-ray, then they rolled me out into the room and left me there. And I had all tubes up in my neck, bags and all sorts of things going on, drainage tubes and all sorts. And I'm sitting there and I said, yo, bro, Wait, like, you're going to take me up? And he said, no, I can't, you know, we have to wait for someone else to come back down for you. I'm like, what? And I'm sitting there and I know my boss is coming down, you know. So 
I've got myself, my fast self, out of the wheelchair and I'm holding onto the wheelchair with all these tubes, my gown all hanging off and I've tried, I, I walked and I, I headed back to the uh, room. As I'm walking down one long corridor, this woman's come towards me, she goes, what are you doing? She, she was an off-duty nurse and she come and she sat me in and she so kindly she pushed me back up to my ward and I got there and my bosses were there waiting. Recovery, let's talk about recovery. Recovery time, I got off the painkillers as soon as I could. Really, really don't do well with painkillers. So I got off of them as quick as possible. The expectation was that I would be in a wheelchair um, for, for several months, just, do you know what I mean? Rehabilitating and, and getting back up on my feet and stuff like that. It was none of that. None of that. I was walking around in the hospital. I, I, not at one point did I need, I had a Zimmer frame at first, but I didn't even, I didn't, one day maybe I used it, the first day, and I didn't need any of this stuff. The recovery was miraculous, and I, I thank God for that. And I don't, I don't say that like a cheesy thing. I thank God for that, because I know that he's looking after me, and he's watching over me. And I started to feel the benefits as well. I, I could eat, and I wasn't choking on food, and do you know what I'm saying? I'd say the surgery changed my life in many ways. Literally, uh, boy, Taylor got pregnant like, like just a few months after coming out of hospital, after the surgery, do you know what I'm saying? So that obviously, something's not going on, all right, you know what I mean? But yeah, she got pregnant. In recent times, I started feeling some issues. I've got an issue, an issue called, um, they call it subclavian steel. I sound like a superhero. Subclavian steel! But no, it, it, it's where, because I've got the tube in my neck, occasionally the blood will change direction and it will just make me drop. Um, very annoying, man. And it's, it's if I use my arm a lot. And when I went to them about it, do you know what they told me? Don't use your right arm. Anyway, I use my right arm. Yes, I use it. You know what I mean? Push through all these things, man. Uh, we thank God for the surgeons. We thank the surgeons for their skill and, and their time they put into honing in their skills and, you know what I mean? Learning their trade well, because they've done well. My surgery was a very unusual surgery. Um, they, they videoed it and they, other surgeons came along to watch, etc. because not many people are born with an abhorrent artery like this. Um, so when I try and explain this to other medical people, they just don't get it, man. When I go in for something I'm, like, I'm concerned, I had an abhorrent artery, they, they're like, huh? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They don't get it. So, and that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, that's my surgery story. Um, all, all is good now.